air was very little. Dark, damp, cold. Seven. Five of us just crouched like this and waiting. I don't know for how long. It didn't take long, about an hour. The dogs start to bark. He had about two dog, uh, two dogs on a chain, you know, what I have on the farm. Start to bark. And before you know, they're knocking at his door, and we heard every word. And they knock at the door, and he opens up. You know, he was sort of expecting it, and, and he was a type of personality, as I said, very loud in his uh, voice, and great personality. You know, and joking around. And he says, oh, hello, he says, yes, he says, I guess you know, we're here. Yes, I heard in church, he says, please come in. He says, have you got any Jews here? He says, no. Can we look? Can we look? So sure, go and look. So they looked at the rooms. Actually, there wasn't much to look at there. Can we go in the basement? He says, sure. So he opens up, there was a trap door. He opens up the trap door, and it was dark, no lights, no nothing. And... Uh, I could see some flashes of light, or maybe they had some kind of flashlight. And he goes first, and it wasn't very steep down, I don't know, I would say about eight steps. And he went down first, and I could hear voices, two or three men, for sure. And right away he is attracting to that shelf, as I said before, there was a shelf facing for storage. And on that sh shelf was stored, they used to make a lot of homebrew themselves, uh, wine, and he uh, started a conversation to these bottles. He says, oh, I just finished making this homebrew, and I tried a different uh, recipe from this wheat and this so on. And, and he starts talking and talking, and they asking questions and so on. And I could see a flight, you know, a, a, a flash of a light in here, and that's it. And it took about a minute, two was the most, and that was the end of it. We backed right out, and I walked out. During this time, now the reason he was loud, he was louder than usually. He was very clever. In case of a sneeze or a cough, so he tried to drown certain, in case that sound comes out of there. So he was very, very loud, you see. And moving around these bottles, you know, making a lot of noise. He told us that after that. So that was as close as could be. God forbid if, okay, my sister at the time was, uh, what I say, eight, nine years old, she could have cried for fear or, or, or coughed or whatever. Nothing happened, not a sound from us. So that was very close to death, one particular occasion. And another one I also remember, uh, I'll never forget it, when April 1st comes out, which is Fool's Day. I never, it always comes into flashing through my mind, that was the second time. And that time was also we were caught downstairs sitting in the, in the uh, living room or kitchen. It was all in one. And we heard the dogs really, really barking loud. And they had these curtains drawn. But again, there was light that you could see through. And we could hear again men talking. And so there was about uh, three windows, two in the, the other side, you know, show them, and they keep looking, they could see, so we had to find a corridor where they could not see us, so immediately we lay down on the floor against the wall as possible, away from being seen. Five of us, it's pretty, pretty tricky to do that in, you know, in a short period of time. And the dogs could not reach to the door coming in, see, and they were all running around and barking loud. And they could hear conversation, we couldn't make it out, and it was going on, I would say, for a minute, talking, walking. I couldn't see any shadow through the window, you know, looking in or anything. And, and then it got quiet, we couldn't hear any voices. The dogs were barking, but a little less. So my, my father was curious to see, you know, at least, so he stood up and, and looked. Sure enough, there were civilians with rifles uh, uh, walking away. I think he said three or four men. So there again, we don't know whether they were suspicious of this family or, or what. And that was the second time. Except since then, we never went down again. How did you spend your days? Oh. Do you remember? What could we do there? We didn't read. There was nothing to read. They didn't, you know, there was a poor farmer. He had no magazines, no papers. 
I just don't know, you know, how much you wonder. And my parents never talked about it, what we did. I remember we were delighting ourselves, we were full of lice. Fleas, you know, these bad fleas galore from hay, you know, so we were changing, you know, uh, you know, if you don't eliminate them naturally, what's the change is going to do? So we grabbed hay from a different corner, you know, and put it on top and waiting for the food, which was uh, basic food just about the daily, it was uh, potato soup and 95% water and a piece of uh, dark bread. This is the food I remember was eating. <laughs>